Hey everybody, it's Heather the Painter here. I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks for using the new Particle Shop Hair Pack. Uh, it is a new plugin for Photoshop users, and I believe it's also, uh, you can use it in other programs, so it's kind of like Corel's giving you a little bit of a gift based on the Particle Brush um, technology. So the beauty about this is we have different packs and we've got different effects. And I'll open those up in just a second here. So I am going to take a couple different images to show you, you know, crazy hair, straight hair, realistic hair, um, just different ways of using these really cool brushes. And the nice thing is anybody can dive in and use them. They're ready to go immediately. You can use either a mouse or a stylus like the Wacom tablet. I would highly recommend using the Wacom tablet because you get that pressure and you get um, speed and tilt and all that good stuff, but the pressure is really what you're going for. So to get started, I've opened up Photoshop CC. I'm going to make a copy of my background image just so I can have the effects on a separate layer. So I'm going to drag that here, or the shortcut is Command J if you're working on a Mac. Then we're going to come up to Filter, Painter, Particle Shop. Now if you don't have Photoshop, but you do have Painter, uh, Painter has made Particle Shop brushes for Painter as well, so you can buy the brush packs without needing the Particle Shop plugin. So when we open up Particle Shop, we're going to see this dialog every time. It um, asks us if we want to buy any more brush packs. There are uh, various ones. We've got Flame, Fabric Fantasy, Fine Art, Light It Up, Fur, Spaced Out Storm, and Superhero. And all of them have a, an entirely different set of brushes. I'm going to X out of there. So a little bit about the work set up here. On the left we have our brush, so we can use our brush. I'm going to undo that by clicking Command Z or Edit Undo. Underneath we have the eraser, which means we can erase out. And it will only erase the effects because I'm on a separate layer, which I don't have anything down yet. Then we have over here, I'll zoom in closely, is a smudge, which allows you to smudge and blend as you're going. We have our dropper tool, and just like Photoshop, the shortcut for that is I, as in uh, ice cream, not eyedropper. So ice cream will pull, uh, call up the eyedropper tool, and then we have our color wheel. What's cool about the color wheel is we have this little thing called glow. So if you're familiar with any of the particle brushes before Particle Shop came out, they had a glow function, which means they would literally kind of glow and blend with the image and you can change the color of your glow. So you can turn that on or off. I'll show you in some of the hair. Now this is temporal, so as soon as I click outside of it, it's gonna leave. So back to the brush. So this top part up here, the very first section, this will um, erase all of your brush strokes on this layer. So it's discarding anything that you're doing in Particle Shop. This button is kind of your undo, it goes back one step. This button here would be highlighted if I made a step, and this would go forward. So if I undid something, but I figured ah, I kind of like it, we can go forward and come back to it. Now here we have our reset brush. Uh, this is in Painter and it's very helpful. So say I've taken a brush, I've made a whole bunch of adjustments to it. It's really crazy. I don't remember where it started out. and I'm making marks. And I go, I don't remember how that brush started. Let's just reset it and start fresh. You can click Bip. and now the brush is how it was factory saved. So this allows multiple users on Particle Shop without you guys getting annoyed with each other's brush settings, which sometimes happens when Jack comes and paints in the middle of the night. So I'm going to discard those, and it's going to ask me revert document to last save version, and I say yes. There we go. So that's kind of like a delete all if you had um, a layer option. Continuing over on the top menu, we have our size that we can change. What's nice about this is if we click this button, this will now respond to our pressure. So if we click on this and we have a little bit of a size, I'm sorry, a little bit of pressure, we have a little brush, but if I have a big pressure, you see how it's getting bigger? So this, when it's selected and you have to manually select it, means your brush is now size sensitive with pressure. So lots of pressure gives you a bigger brush. Smaller pressure gives you a smaller brush. 
Over here we've got opacity, which is how heavy or how much coverage you're getting with your brush. So at 100% we're getting quite a bit of coverage. That's full strength. But at 5% you can see it's very, very light. So I want you to think of this as your opacity or as your coverage brush. Again, what's nice is we've got that little icon again. If we click on that, that means it's now pressure sensitive. So with lots of pressure, it's going to be very, very heavy. This is probably not the best brush to try with. Let me try one more. I'm going to use Afro brush. So with heavy pressure, you can see we get a lot of opacity. We get a lot of strength. We get a lot of coverage. With a light opacity, you see how it's much lighter. We're getting very, very little coverage. So I'm barely touching the surface. So I typically keep these on because now your brush is very expressive, assuming you're working with a tablet, not a mouse. Um, if you have these clicked when you're working with a mouse, nothing is going to change, unfortunately, because there's no pressure sensitivity with a mouse. So if you're working with a tablet, these are really, really key. Um, and that keeps you from having to resize or readjust your opacity at random. Um, now it will adjust it according to your pressure. Next one over here we have is um, variability. So our color variability, if we boost that way up, you see how now it's picking up more color. This one was at 4%, now we're at 50. If we take that all the way down, that means we're just going to get the color that we have chosen from our color wheel, which happens to be a light white. So if we have another color picked out, and we turn that color variability up. Let's see what happens. So you see it's bringing up variations of that one color. Normally I stay at a pretty low percentage range, maybe about 10, just so it gives me a little bit of variation. I don't want some crazy variation because I'm going to keep these fairly realistic. Next over we have paper texture and how much of it shows. Now not all the brushes are going to really reveal paper texture. But if we had this all the way up, means it's going to show paper texture. And our paper texture selector is right next to it. This comes as a standard default. So we can change our paper texture at any time. And if we zoom in really closely, you see how now it's picking up a little bit of that canvas. It's very, very, very subtle. Let's try this one. I'm just trying to give myself a lot of coverage. So now we're getting that paper texture that's selected. If we took this all the way down, we would get no paper texture. So a high number gives you lots of texture, a low number gives you none. We've got our magnifying glass here, which will zoom in and out as needed. So I'll zoom out. Uh, let's go to 100%. Go to 25. Our spacebar is our handy dandy mover. And then over here on the right, you can see all of the packs. And in, within each pack, you have a different set of variants. So I've got a lot of really cool brushes to use. So I'm going to stick with the hair brushes for today. And I'm going to get rid of all of these little scratches that I just made. Okay. So with Alex, my very trusting husband that doesn't know I'm about to give him a crazy hairdo. I'm going to do something totally uncharacteristic of him and I'm going to give him an afro. So I'm going to choose the afro brush. I'm going to click on my color checker, color picker, and I can either choose the color at will or I can take this the dropper tool, remember I, and I can sample what's actually there, which might be the best bet right now. I want to keep it realistic. So instead of giving him like a hot pink afro, I want to give him a natural hair color afro. I'm going to start with my dark colors. So I'm going to select, you can see my color picker up here. Get a dark color. And then I'm going to take my brush. I need to make sure that my pressure sensitive sensitivity is on for both of those. I'm going to get a bigger brush. That's a little bit too big. Let's go down to about 100. Still a little large, let's go to 50. Uh, I'm going to keep going down. There we go. 
All right, so you see how I'm getting some browns in there? That's from my color variability. I'm gonna take that color variability down to zero. There we go. So I'm going to make this rounded circular motion and I'm gonna fill in his hair. And I'm gonna turn that opacity down a little bit just so I get a little bit more variability. So some are lighter and some are heavier strokes. There we go. Gonna come around to the natural uh, hairline. Gonna zoom out a little bit, 50. Looking good. Alex has never had hair long enough to do this with. So I'm gonna keep on building. And it's really doing all the curls for me. It's kind of nice because I'm not having to draw the curls. I'm just drawing in a circular motion. And eventually I'm going to build up some of my highlights so it looks like there's a little bit of light play on his hair, just like we'd have it naturally. There we go. Let's zoom back. Looking good. All right, so I need to kind of bridge the gap. We can still see that original bit right there. Let's open up that dropper and go straight to black. Oops, I gotta turn back to my brush. And we're gonna fill that in. I may have gone a little bit on the dark side, so let me drop my opacity down to about 10. Oh, let's raise it up to about 20. 20. There we go. I'm gonna zoom out again, make sure it looks good. Very nice. Now to make this look believable, or to convince people that was his actual hairdo, you still have to follow the same lighting pattern that the rest of the image is getting. So I'm gonna take a sample of a highlight color, and I might exaggerate it a little bit. Let's come up, let's try to sample a highlight color. And I'm gonna come up just a little bit. Go back to brush, using the same brush. And I need to boost up my opacity, so let's go to 40. Gonna come up with a little bit of a lighter color. And we can see that the main light source is over here. Drop that opacity down a little bit more. Now I'm trying to vary my pressure so my size changes as well. It's not getting small enough, so I'm gonna drop that down. Went a little too far. Drop down that pressure a little. And now that lighting pattern is starting to follow the natural pattern that's on his face. We're not gonna have too much light spill off over here because the side's in shadow. Put some dark tones back, I went a little overboard. So now, if I zoom out, I zoomed out a little too far. That looks pretty believable. I'm gonna put some lighter edges on, lighter colors on those edges. Here we go. And what's nice that this is staying on a separate layer 
is I can always mask it out if I've gone a little bit too far. So once we're out of the painter uh, particle shop, I'm sorry, particle shop dialog, we can mask out and clean this up because I went a little overboard about how much, how close it comes to his head. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So at this point, we're going to go hit save and we have two options. And I'm so glad that they incorporated the second option. The first option means it's going to automatically merge all of our brushwork with the current layer. The second one means it's going to save all of your brushwork on a transparent layer, which is fantastic. I would highly recommend this one for several reasons. If you need to add some photographic grain to your hair to make it match the original photograph more, because as you can see, there's not much grain, meaning like the pixels or the dots. Whereas in the image, there's a little bit of photographic grain. We would need to save only brush strokes on that transparent layer. So then once we're back in Photoshop, we could then apply a layer of noise. So we can see before and after. And I am going to layer mask a little bit. I'm going to come over here with my layer mask. I'm going to pull up just a simple black brush, first brush in Photoshop. If you know anything about layer masking, you know black hides, white reveals. And I'm going to just lightly, lightly hide a little bit of that work on the edges. There we go. And then I'm going to add a little bit of noise to that afro just to match him. So we're going to go up to filter, noise, add noise. And I'm going to zoom in really closely to be able to look at it. And you can see at 12.5, it's just breaking up too much. It doesn't look real. So I'm going to go down to two. Uh, let's try four. I'm going to back off a little, go to 3.3. .3. I'm going to click OK. So now we've got just a hint of photographic noise in his hair. So it looks like it could actually have been in the original capture. So these are the hair brushes, and I'm going to show you in one more section what you can do with these fun brushes. But I think it's pretty funny. <laughs>